Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and it's four o'clock on a Friday, which means it's time for this week's Fuse Friday, and this is where I take um, the Fuse for Nintendo Switch app, and I've been uh, making some games and learning how to use this app, and then we have a little talk about it, and I've got um, my work in progress on my game to show off today, made some really good progress on that, so I'm excited to show you that. Um, Fuse news, there isn't much news in the world of Fuse this week, although um, we do have a game jam that's starting tonight, so usually about 6 o'clock if you're, if you're new to Fuse, new to the sort of game jam idea, if you check the Fuse Arena website, the forum now, and also jump on the Fuse Discord, uh, you will see that this week's, uh, or this game jam's, theme will be announced at around about six o'clock i think it's been announced six or seven something like that sometime later this evening anyway and then uh 48 hours to make a game or a program based around that theme and they'll be showcased on sunday evening i believe it's normally a live twitch stream run by uh, mike dx uh, from the discord channel having a look at what people have made last week's was, oh the last one sorry was really good all based around jumping i think i showcased that last week um, so that's really good. Um, so that's the only real bit of news from this week that I can think of. Um, Dave um, from Fuse has put up a few more videos during the week. Dave and Ben put up a few more videos on YouTube. So check those out. Some more tutorials, specifically looking at sprites, which is really useful and uh, always interesting. So it's really good to check that out as well. So this week, with the sort of lack of news, uh, what I thought I'd do is to actually review Fuse, which I haven't done yet. I've been using it for a good few weeks now. And I think it's time I actually uh, stick a score in it. So what I'm going to do is probably jump into the review now, and then we'll come back and have a look at the progress on my project later. I've been using Fuse for a few weeks now, and as you will know if you've been following my Fuse Friday series, I've already made a pretty much fully functioning version of Space Invaders, and that really tells me everything I need to know about Fuse for Nintendo Switch. It's easy to pick up, superbly documented for beginners, and aside a few niggles that I will get to, it's a breeze to use, and also has an excellent online community ready to help out and swap ideas. But is it something you should pick up? Let me tell you in my short review of Fuse for the Nintendo Switch. Now I've been interested in making games since I was 10 years old. At that time I had an Atari 800 machine and would spend hours typing out pages of code that used to be printed in the back of UK gaming magazines. It became an obsession that as well as playing games which I'd loved doing for a few years prior on my Atari 2600, I could also now program my own games. But during a time with no internet or local communities, hitting brick walls and wanting to learn more was extremely hard and despite trying over the years with various game creation suites, studying computing science for two years at college, and even getting my foot in the door at a developer in the early 1990s, I never could stick with it and face the fact it would never be a career or even a hobby that I could pursue. I'd seen Fuse pop up on the eShop on its release back in August, and despite having a quick look into it, the same feeling of not being smart enough or dedicated enough rose in my head and I let it pass. A few months later I was offered the chance to look into it again more closely by the publishers and not really thinking that I would make any use of it, I wasn't sure if I wanted to take it on but almost reluctantly agreed. It didn't take long from starting the application up for the first time to become completely obsessed and absorbed with this fantastic little toolkit. The presentation is functional to put it kindly, a boxy menu system whilst quick to navigate isn't exactly what you'd call slick by any means. But I find that half the charm. It almost wants you to step back to those days of the bedroom coder in the 1980s. So much so it includes a series of changeable skins for the look of the user interface, which includes ones that use the colour scheme of the Commodore 64 and one clearly based on the ZX Spectrum, which is a real nice touch. Fuse immediately starts off with a walkthrough of the interface and encourages you to check out some of the included sample programs that have been made by creators and I believe some community members too. These samples range from simple function examples and small tech demos of the 2D and 3D engine to the pretty fully featured Super Mega Arena Blaster, which really does give you a showcase of what's possible. At any time you can dive into the code of any program, including these sample programs, to copy or even change it however you like to and see the results quickly on the screen, which is incredibly helpful. If you are new to Fuse or coding in general, I would recommend heading straight to the help section, which is jam-packed with information but delivered with so much thought that it never feels overwhelming. A helpful getting started section would explain the concept of Fuse and how to use it, 
whilst a large number of tutorials walk you through the major pieces of code you need to use, finally culminating in an excellent multi-step tutorial for making a platforming game. All the information is well written, easy to follow and available both on your Switch or online should you prefer to have it open whilst working in the editor. Now talking of the editor, this is where you'll be spending most of your time. Options to use a USB keyboard are welcome, as is the on-screen keyboard complete with authentic retro key press sounds, which I just love. You can also use your Joy-Cons to navigate the keyboard using a floating pointer, which actually feels far better than it sounds, and there are also a large number of helpful shortcuts and hotkeys using your Joy-Cons that once learned really help you to fly around and edit your code. I won't get too bogged down in the language itself, suffice to say I've found the syntax incredibly well thought out and on the whole very intuitive and it's also very forgiving allowing you to space out your code however you want and it's not particular about which case you write in which isn't always the um, case when programming in other languages. The editor isn't without its issues though which will probably be more frustrating to seasoned coders and that is that the editor at this present time lacks any sort of search functionality which is quite baffling in any text-based program. The team will hopefully be adding this down the line, but it's definitely a small frustration right now, especially as your games and programs grow in size. There is a helpful bookmark system that allows you to tag your code and jump to specific bookmarks very easily, which is a godsend, but it really needs a find replace as a minimum as soon as possible. As someone that works in another coding language every day, there are some luxuries that I miss, such as auto-completing of certain pieces of code, and functions showing which data can be accepted on the fly, but I'm hopeful that eventually these sort of things will be added. Learning the language is one thing, but if you become a Fuse whiz kid, your games will still need graphics and sound. Personally, I'm an awful artist, and anything beyond a stick man, then I'm struggling. This has always been one of the main sticking points when I've tried to create games in the past. I just knew that no matter how well I might have coded a game, I'd never be able to create the art and sound to go with it. Well, this is where Fuse really amazes. Included in the application are over 10,000 different assets, from 2D graphics, 3D models, music, sound effects, even speech clips. It truly is a treasure trove and turns Fuse from what would be a really nice game creation language to an application that with a little bit of effort, you can have a great looking and sounding fully functional game without the need to have an artistic bone in your body. For those that do want to push beyond the library of graphics, Fuse does include a fairly chunky image editor, allowing you to create a single graphic or a series of graphics that can work as an animation. On top of that, there's also a map editor, which allows you to create maps and levels for your games using either graphics taken from the library or your own creations. These tools are simple to use and only limited by your imagination. For example, someone in the community is currently recreating the old Amiga classic, The Prince of Persia, using animations that they've done in the image editor, and it really is quite a stunning piece of work. The final point to talk about is sharing your creations then. At any point, you can share a project with anybody on your friends list who also has Fuse. Now, this was fine at first, albeit a little clunky, as it meant needing to add friends to your Switch list to be able to see each other's creations. In the last update to Fuse though, a new system was added where a project submitted to Fuse was given a unique ID and now that is all you need to see another user's project, much the same way as something like Super Mario Maker works. It's hopeful in the near future that there will be a Fuse Player app released that will allow anyone on the Switch to download creations even if they don't have Fuse themselves and play what has been shared. Now this is pending Nintendo approval, but I've got my fingers crossed that this sees the light of day as it would be incredibly motivating to know something that you create can be played by anybody in the world, but we'll just have to wait and see on that one. So that's Fuse for Switch. What's my verdict? Well, I'm absolutely in love with this software. It's enabled me to fulfill a lifelong dream of making video games, and I've only had it a few weeks and barely really scratched the surface. It's incredibly well thought out, and as Fuse themselves visit schools around the UK and teach this code in there, it's obvious that it's user-friendly and easy to pick up. Your mileage may vary, of course, and I do have a bit of a head start as I do code every day for my day job, so many of the principles and terminology are familiar to me. But even if you're a complete beginner, please don't be put off thinking you'll be out of your depth, and that's how approachable Fuse is. If you've ever had any desire to create video games and you have a Nintendo Switch, then I'd say Fuse is an absolute must-have. It's tricky to give Fuse a score because, as I said earlier, your personal mileage may vary, 
but I've tried to come at the review from a beginner's point of view, using it for the first time. And with that in mind, given the ease of usability, the readily available help, the vast asset library, and the developers wanting to continually add and improve the package, I'm going to be giving Fuse on the Nintendo Switch a brilliant nine out of 10. So there you go, hope you enjoyed the re review of Fuse there. Hope that's useful. If you've got any questions or anything, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that review as well. Really appreciate that. Just before we get to my project, I just want to uh, give a shout out to one of the other Discord members, Spybot84. It's his birthday today and uh, usually watches with his, uh, his lad. So uh, big hello to you two. Hope you're enjoying the video and uh, hope you have a great birthday. Um, so let's have a look at the, the progress of my Space Invaders project. Um, if you remember, if I try and bring up on the screen here, if I uh, bring up some of uh, last week's footage, see where we were there. Um, great progress, really. I'm so proud of this project. And to be able to get it to this point um, in Fuse after just a few weeks of, you know, starting cold, starting from nothing, not knowing the language, not knowing how Fuse worked particularly, um, to get to this point as my first project, I must say I'm pretty proud of that and uh, it gives me hope from the some of the sort of original ideas that I've got how they're going to work so anyway enough waffling let's jump into the project now what I can't do this week is uh talk too much about the code because I've been really naughty and I've let the code get away from me so if you remember back if you've been watching this for a while my very first video I said always comment your code Always use bookmarks, and uh, I think the excitement of, of working on this project has got away with me. So if there's a lesson learned for the next uh, the next project, it will be I will definitely try to uh, annotate my code better and certainly use bookmarks more. One sort of technical takeaway from this project is that I need to use functions a lot more um, because at the moment I've just sort of straight coded from top to bottom doesn't make it particularly readable or easy to use and as this project's grown uh, it's kind of grown out of control so it's I mean, you still only sort of around about 300 lines long probably a lot less when you take out the spaces um, but yeah lessons learned which is what it's all about um, so I can't really I mean I can pick bits out for you but it's just such a mess that it's not going to make a lot of sense to anybody but the structure still remains if we look at my my uh, bookmarks here at the top we've just got a load of variables just added and added and added to that as uh, as the project went on. Uh, so there's the sprite stuff, some bullet stuff, um, three different types of enemy sprites, which we'll see how that works in a second. Uh, lines 58 to 60 there. Um, da -da -da -da, all of this bit you saw last week. And the alien shooting stuff. Uh, line 112, setting up the shield sprites. We've now got shields in the game. So 112 to 115 set up the graphics for the shields, which I actually drew myself, which are my first ever graphics uh, attempt drawn in a game. Very basic shields, but there you go. I, I did it, and they're in there. Um, lines 117 to 126 set up the shields and position them on the screen, set up hitboxes, that kind of thing. And then move into our main loop on line 130. Um, new lines there at 137 and 138 uh, output in the... Um, player score and the player lives remaining. A couple of things I want to polish up there, but we'll talk about those when we actually run the program. Uh, you'll see references like on line 157, references to audio uh, quite a lot in the in the code now. The, the program, the game actually has sounds, which is pretty cool. Not couldn't really get the original sounds from the game. This is kind of my take on Space Invaders, so I've just kind of used sort of generic laser sounds and explosion sounds, so, you know, all these little things that can be polished that I probably won't polish, but um, they're there to be changed if need be. Um, quite a lot of enemy logic there, at line 194. Going through quite a lot of logic of uh, if the enemy's been hit, uh, when the enemy fires. That took quite a lot of time in the past week was working out uh, which enemy can fire. And again, I'll speak a little bit about that in a second when we get into the program. And... Yeah, some more alien shooting stuff. And then some collision stuff here. So line 277 and line 285. 
uh, line 305, all that sort of stuff, checking if the player or the aliens have been hit by bullets and changing stuff accordingly, whether it's losing a life or adding scores. Let's uh, see, so line three, 321 now, uh, reduces the player's life down. And then 325, 324, 325, if the player's life's down at zero, then it's game over. We've got a game over loop, which starts at 334. So if it's game over, and then we're basically clearing the screen and putting up a game over message. Again, I don't know if this is the way you should do it. It's the way I kind of worked out how to do it. Possibly is a better way of doing this, but I just basically made all the sprites that were there on the screen invisible. It seemed to work okay, but it's probably there's a, a more efficient and better way to do it. And there we go, down to the end. So it's, it's not the biggest program, but let's get it running. And you can see the changes from last week. So there we go. So we've got backgrounds. Or our background, we've got sound, we've got explosions, we've got the aliens firing. Now what I want to do is clear out some of these aliens. And just when we talk about the uh, the clearing of um, columns and that kind of thing. And you see as well, I've got the development um, statistics down the right hand side as well. So the frames per second, uh, all different stuff there. You'll see as well, another big change actually from last week is I've uh, limited the play field. Uh, I realised sort of my original invaders were going right the way across the screen, which just made it, uh, you know, I think enclosing the playfield into about a third of the screen just makes it a lot more intense. So before I, uh, the aliens get right down to the bottom, you'll see that the firing routine was quite tricky because only an alien that's got nothing underneath it can fire. So that was quite a complicated thing to work out of uh, which alien was valid to fire. So you can see now that they will only shoot if they've got nothing underneath them, which uh, when you start the game is usually just the bottom row. Oh, no, I exploded there. And there's a little bug in the game because uh, I'm continuing to explode over and over. Let's just let's just get killed. And then you can see the game over screen. So there's a little bug there I need to clear off. Is there some, some um, code I was working on this morning, actually? Uh, just need to clear those um, explosions. But there you go, game over. So we'll go back into it again. Uh, so these are my shields, obviously got detection on them, so these won't function as traditional Space Invader shields, that you won't be able to shoot through them. And um, what's going to happen, my plan was, is that when the aliens shoot them, they sort of degrade and maybe sort of, if they get hit maybe four or five times, I'll have to test it and see how it works, but on sort of the fourth or fifth time they, they're hit, they're totally destroyed and removed. Um, that's my thinking anyway, see how that works. Um... So we've got, obviously got different levels of alien. They're worth different points. You'll see the score, the bottom aliens, the green ones are worth 10. The little red cross ones are worth 20, I think they were. And the top row are worth 30. It may be 10, 30, 50. I can't remember now. Um, I do want to have a UFO going across the top like there was in the original Space Invaders as well. So that needs to be done. But yeah, hopefully you can see the progress that's been made there in sort of a week. It's a, almost completely and utterly transformed. Uh, so a little list of things left to do is the uh, the shields getting hit that I spoke about. Uh, that's one thing to do. Um, the aliens getting down where they are now, that should trigger a game over when they get down to sort of um, the bottom of the play field. Maybe just a little bit of game testing to see, you know, if the aliens need to be slowed down a bit or the shooting. That's just going to come with testing just to get that difficulty balance right. Uh, the lives at the bottom, I'd like that to be sort of graphically represented. So three ships, and then when you get hit, you lose one of those ships rather than just having a number. Uh, what else is there? There's a little bit of hit detection problems around shields. You may notice there, there's a little bit of sort of the hit box is a little bit too wide. Um, you know, I should be allowed to shoot up past that shield there. So it's particularly a problem at the end of the, the play field here. I should be able to shoot past that shield. So that just needs a little tweak. But again, all these little things are nothing too difficult to do. Just sort out the problem of getting shot here where you just keep exploding. So little tweaks. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm probably going to get this program completely finished by the middle of next week. So once I do that, I'll then be sharing it. Um, like I said a little while ago, there is still polishing that can be done. But I'm going to move on from this project. Um, I think I've learned enough. I think it's in a playable state. Um, it could be tweaked and tweaked, you know, for, for hours and hours to get it really smooth. But I'm really happy with where it is at the moment. Really happy with what I've done on it. So I'm sort of eager now to take that, move on to the next project. So I'm going to put a little poll up on the side of the next project that perhaps you'd like to see me do. 
I'm thinking of something like Frogger, perhaps, something with a bit more animation in. That would be quite cool. Someone suggested something like Breakout today, although it kind of feels a lot like Space Invaders, um, that sort of project. Um, I was thinking maybe a Match 3. Possibly that could be a, a nice little one to do, although, again, it's not particularly... You know, I want to move on to something with animation, probably. Uh, there was another idea that I can't think of, but I'll try and put them up on a poll on the side of the site, on the side of the video, sorry, and uh, have a little vote. Let me know what you'd like me to tackle next. I've got a couple of original ideas as well that I'm kind of working on in the background, but for the next sort of Fuse Friday, uh, let me know what you'd like to see. And just also generally let me know if these videos are helpful. If you want me to do more sort of a tutorial style, I've got a couple of ideas for tutorials now that I'd like to do, but also I don't want to sort of tread on uh, Dave and Ben's toes too much, although I'm sure they'd, uh, they'd welcome more videos. So I'm probably going to be speaking to them about that, seeing if I can sort of do a little bit more um, than I, I'm currently doing. So basically if I can uh, have some tutorials and stuff on the site, if that would be useful. Um, but hopefully some of you guys have picked up Fuse in the last week from when it went on sales, down to a great 12 99 now in the UK. Uh, if you didn't see that price drop video last week, uh, so hopefully it'll encourage um, many more people to, to pick it up. did notice kind of an uptake on the Discord. There's uh, quite a few people joined this week, so hopefully that's a positive sign that people are either watching my videos or have just picked up Fuse because it's nice and you know cheap now. So more the merrier. I'd love to see more of your projects. And uh, obviously the more people that are using Fuse, the more help and ideas we get, which is really cool, uh, the more the merrier. So if you haven't picked up Fuse yet, please check it out. As I say, big price drop. Uh, permanent price drop now so it's really no excuse not to pick it up and have a go so i think we'll call it a day now thanks for watching this week's fuse friday we'll be back next friday at four o'clock with another video and uh hopefully uh maybe the start of a new project as i say we'll be sharing this one so details of the share code will be in next week's video if you want to download this and have a play yourself that'd be really cool would love to know uh what you think of uh, of my space invaders game and uh, see if we can get a high score competition going or something. <laughs> see who can uh, who can clear the most aliens. But until then, I will bid you farewell. Have a great week. And I will see you all on the next video. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.